Home media and horror movies go together like blood and guts. Or Ari Aster and our deep existential misery. And through the decades, the trusty pause button has come to our aid in the quest to scope out all of the juicy background details, head-scratching puzzles, or easter eggs horror directors have left around the screen for us. With that in mind then, I'm Andrew from What Culture Horror, and here are the 10 most paused horror movie moments. Number 10. Carved Patio Boyfriend. Scream. 1996 saw Scream rise out of the schlocky slasher ashes of the 80s, steal all the tropes, and turn horror on its head. In Scream's opening sequence, we famously have Casey Becker answering a phone call from Ghostface, but it's soon revealed that Casey's high school sweetheart, Steve, is gagged and bound on the patio. To save his life, Casey has to correctly answer some horror-themed questions. Eh, spoilers, this doesn't go well for Steve. We hear a squelch, we see blood, the boyfriend's head slumps to the side, and the camera only rests on his body for a brief moment. But what has Ghostface done? Like Multiple pauses show that might be a trail of guts there, but no matter how many times you freeze the frame, you still can't quite figure it out. Number 9. Her own personal Jesus. Carrie. Adapted from the work of Stephen King, Brian De Palma's Carrie tells the story of a young social outcast for whom the combination of a strict mother, school bullies, and a sudden onset of telekinesis proved fatal. A true showstopper, the film's climax sees Carrie White literally bring the house down after crucifying her mother, in turn burying them both. As part of this, De Palma adds to the uncomfortableness by showing a solitary saint surviving in the rubble of the family home, with creepy lit up eyes that seem neither object nor human. First things first, it's not actually Jesus, though the pose and Bible at his feet make this an easy mistake, but instead it's Saint Sebastian, another Christian martyr. The fact this pose mirrors that one Carrie's mother was in when she died is no mistake, perhaps implying that Carrie's mother was the martyr who died to save us from Carrie White, or perhaps making the more complex comment on the role that her uptight religious moralizing played in destroying Carrie. In any case, fingers hit the pause button to compare Carrie's mother's earlier scene and to try and work out whose eyes they are and what they might mean. Number 8. The Uninvited Guest, Insidious the first Insidious movie contains not only the most pause-friendly moment in the franchise, but one of its most bone-chilling scares. Josh Lambert's mother Lorraine arrives at the new family home, telling of a spate of nightmares she's been having involving Josh and Renee's son, Dalton. Told around the dining table, Lorraine's recurring nightmare features a demon with a red face who has been stalking Dalton's bedroom. Cutting back and forth between Lorraine's face, Josh and Renee's reactions, and the creepy images of her dreams, we are primed for a scare in the frame of the story, but not one in the real present. Thus, we're totally unprepared when the big red Darth Maul looking guy Lorraine is talking about pokes his head out from behind Josh and projects the sounds of hell right at us. Yeah, no thanks. Number 7. The End. The Blair Witch Project. To this day, fans continue to search for any remaining secrets in the game-changing Blair Witch Project. And nowhere more so than in the film's end sequence, which sees Heather follow Mike through an abandoned house, drawn in by the cries of their friend Josh. The scene concludes with various camera bumps, with a haunting final shot of Mike in mobile, staring into the wall no less, Heather screaming, and Heather's camera not to the ground. At the time of its release, rumours swirled about what may or may not have been hidden in the shadows of this foreboding final scene. But even with today's technology and higher definition copies, the mystery still persists. Can we spot the witch or Rustin Parr? Can we see what happened to Heather? Or is this all just a product of clever filmmaking and location choices? Number 6. Witch on the Wardrobe – The Conjuring The first Conjuring film takes place in the 70s, with paranormal investigators Lorraine and Ed Warren taking a case at the Perron household, a secluded farmhouse where a malevolent presence has awoken. This James Wan picture has several notable scares throughout its runtime, but none are as cleverly conceived as the scene which introduces the film's villain, the witch Bathsheba. In the dark of night, the Piran daughters hear a disturbance around their wardrobe, and while one goes to investigate, the other hangs back just the right distance to spy what's actually in store, giving an audience-baiting gasp that sets up the next shot. A quick pan up and zoom in on Bathsheba atop the wardrobe, but she's only there for a few frames, but yet it's still so terrifying. Number 5. The Shower Scene – Psycho Half psychological thriller, half gothic horror, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho famously departed from tradition by killing its main protagonist at the end of the first act. 
In one of the most famous scenes in cinema history, Marion Crane is caught mid-shower by knife-wielding, dressed as his mother motel owner, Norman Bates. The string shriek, the camera cuts back and forth between perspective shots of Norman plunging a knife, reaction shots of Marion's face, and body shots of the knife hitting home. But does the knife really go in? We see blood, we see the knife against Marion's skin, but even the swiftest of pauses may struggle to tell what really happened. Despite the fact Hitchcock himself said, to audiences and censors alike, this was all camera trickery. And that's still something that many are still trying to work out what exactly happened here. Number 4. The Cubes. The Cabin in the Woods. Josh Whedon's The Cabin in the Woods is a love letter to the familiar tropes of the horror genre. When a group of college friends assemble at a remote cabin and begin playing with the mysterious objects scattered around the place, things can only go one way, and they do, at first with hillbilly zombies storming the cabin. Shockingly, it's soon revealed the cabin is fake and a big corporation is running the show, releasing different monsters in order to obtain a blood sacrifice for the mysterious ancient ones. Always keen on an easter egg or two, Whedon takes the group's survivors deep within the organization's facility to where the monsters are kept. There, cube upon transparent cube house creatures that pay homage to every major horror franchise and even some of the more niche horror franchises. Suffice to say, the pause button has taken a gut hammering while trying to spot our horror movie favourites in one wide angle pullout that captures hundreds of the cubes in all their glory. Number 3. That Head Explosion. Scanners. David Cronenberg is a master at manipulating his audience and at delivering moments that will stay with you long after a film is finished. And in 1981, Scanners, the Canadian game was a sequence that's one of the most memorable in horror history. As for Scanners itself, this sci-fi horror centers on psychics who have telekinetic and telepathic abilities. Or Scanners, as these people are known as. The dodgy Consec weapons company uses these gifted swords to carry out its bidding, but Consec finds itself butting heads with free-spirited rebel leader Daryl Revok, played by the brilliant Michael Ironside. In an iconic scene, Revok infiltrates at Consec marketing event and uses his abilities to explode someone's head. It's ooey, it's gooey, it was hugely shocking for its time, and it is a scene that many have paused over the years, just to take in the full SFX glory of this scene. Number 2. Pazuzu Appears, The Exorcist An all-time classic, William Friedkin's The Exorcist, itself adapted from William Peter Blatty's novel of the same name, centers on poor young Regan McNeil as she becomes possessed by the demon Pazuzu. While this sinister evil makes its presence felt through Regan and the trauma she goes through during that movie, Pazuzu's visage is kept completely hidden. Until it's not. In a swift blink and you'll miss it shot, the Exorcist does offer one briefest of brief glimpse at Pazuzu's true face, and it is absolutely terrifying. Of course, this brief appearance is a moment that's been paused time and time again over the decades, with actress Eileen Dates playing the physical embodiment of this demon. Number 1. The Mask Slips, Halloween John Carpenter's Halloween is one of the most paused movies of all time, but not for blood or gore or hidden details. No, fans have been smashing that pause button over the years to capture a proper glimpse of the face of Michael Myers. In that 1978 picture, Haddonfield is stalked by a Michael who'd escaped from Smith's Grove Sanitarium and who was now looking to reopen the trail of murder he began by killing his sister on Halloween night 15 years ago. Only this time, Michael's attention falls on Laurie Strode and her friends. Once a shape eventually corners Laurie during Halloween's climax, she manages to pull Michael's mask over his head, revealing his face for the first and only time in the film. The thing is, Michael Myers is his modified William Shatner mask. And while you don't want that mystique ruined, you can't help but pause for a glimpse at the evil that lies beneath that mask. So, that's our 10 most paused horror movie moments. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, turn those notification bells on, and come and give us a follow on Twitter, or X, uh, at WhatCultureHorror. While you're there, you can find myself at CultureLeftPeg, but most importantly, be sure to have the best possible day. Whether you're doing something, or whether you're doing absolutely nothing, I hope it goes well for you. And if things aren't going so well, I really do hope they turn around as soon as possible. I've been Andrew Pollard from What Culture Horror, and I'll catch you down the road.